Now it is kind of dark and crummy out, but we needed the rain just fine with me. Besides, I got the world's funnest hobby right down here in the Skunk Works. Go have some fun. There we go. Got some tripod set up. I'm going to take a closer look at this poly car. Should be a fun day. So we'll get right to it. This car is, well, basically, uh, for fans of the series, <laughs> it's uh, it's mandatory. It's Mario, okay? So you just have to have it. And a lot of this has been waiting on it. And as usual, Polycar has done just a wonderful job all around. About the only thing that you might find uh, to your eye is the color is a little bit lighter than maybe you expected. It's almost like a, a tomato uh, red. And looking at prototype photos, it just depends on the photos that you look at. You know, some of the photos from back in the late 60s and 70s, it's, uh, it's all about the photographer, isn't it? And the lighting... So some of them look lighter, some of them look darker. You know, if you look at the the vintage, modern day vintage races where they've been restored, yeah, I don't know. Can you go by that? The paint, you know, usually is pretty accurate. So it's a little bit lighter. And when you compare it to, let's say, the other car, the Chris Amon car here, the prior release, you can tell that... Uh, that there's a difference. Is it correct? Which one's right? You know what? I don't know. I still think it looks great. So right or wrong, it isn't enough <laughs> to spoil anything for me. But again, that's just me. So we'll have some data. Put some data up there about the car, some measurements and everything. But uh, I've had quite a few of these models before. And I'll continue to get them. I think Polycar gives us a great bang for our buck. And I'm just very, very grateful, really, to have this classic in my hands. And with that said, let's put it on the track and have some fun. And looking underneath, no surprises. Right here you see one, two, and three. These are small flat tip screws, so you'll need a small screwdriver for that. So just be careful when you're taking them out. As you can see here, I had this screw removed. That's just for the pod, and I just don't think it needs both of them, and I just leave one. After you remove the screws, you can get the body off. Just please be careful. Take your time. These parts are very delicate. You don't want to break them, so you just can't get heavy handed with it. Just take your time. It exposes the motor and the gearbox system. I bench tested this one, 23,585, no load, at 12 volts DC. That's just about average. These motors are actually more consistent than you would think. This is pretty close to some of them that are six or seven years old, so, you know, pretty impressive. And again, Going back to my old video from way back then, I haven't had any failures and I still haven't had any failures. They've done a pinion change. Now they have the, uh, the conical pinion instead of the straight brass, but everything works just fine. Just make sure that it's lubricated. And then, of course, up front, as we've discussed before, you have your set screws for your M2 screws here. And on the back side, there's not a whole lot of adjustment to do. You can get a little bit but not too much. But if you need the set screws, just go to your favorite shop and get them ordered. Anyway, we're just going to clean up the stock tires, going to button it back up, and let it go. As far as tires go, well, a lot of people like the stock tires, and I don't blame you. I've actually kept stock tires on several of my cars. Once they're cleaned up, they actually hook up pretty good out here on our surface. But if you want aftermarket tires, first of all, good old Paul Gage. 2112 5LM. That's the tire I like on this car the most. You could go 20 or 19, but I like the 21 diameter. That way I can sand it down, bring it down right where I want it. So 2112 5LM is my recommendation. As far as quick slicks go with the silicone side, 
CB52 or CB53. It just depends on the tire diameter that you want. Either or look really good on the car and just a little bit wider than stock. And then finally, if you want some different aftermarket rubber, I kind of like the slotted brand right here, the 1172 F22 compound. That's what's on here. It fits really well and it's just a suggestion for some different rubber. Of course, there's other tire sizes. The wheels are, you know, very common size, but oh, that's just a start and hopefully that'll help you get going. Hopefully you can see this a little clearer. This is where the exhaust meets right there it's almost directly underneath the axle and you want to make sure that it is installed 100 percent on each side so a tweezers really comes in handy to align those pipes so just make sure that they're both lined up and installed properly and then you can reinstall the screw yep just a super smooth car box stock nothing clean the tires didn't chew the tires I just said clean them track set at 12 volts been messing with the adjustments on the DeFalco but beautiful yeah have a fast lap of 3614 it's got a 3 it's got a 3.5 in it, a little bit more tuning, but remember, all I've done is just make sure the car was lubricated, braids were okay, and cleaned the stock tires, so this is as box stock as it gets, and it's, I don't know, pretty awesome if you ask me. This is one great way to spend a rainy day. Aren't we lucky our hobby's inside where it's nice? Yeah. Well done, Polycar. Consistent, as always, in quality, in my opinion, anyway. I've got a handful of them, and just, uh, just good quality. There's just so much fun. What I need now is a couple more people, because side by side, Open wheel action. Man, I tell you. Damn it, boys. That's where it gets fun. Yeah, I see this happen in Labor Day. Anyway, very nice. Uh oh. What's this? Party crasher. I couldn't help it. I had to bring the recent Lotus out here, too. I mean, it was just released. I just got it, what? A week or two before this one so they uh, they run together very well lap times are well about as close as it gets and again this car is box stock I've loosened it up to get a little bit of float clean the stock tires and it is as expected a smooth operator you just ah, you just can't go wrong with these cars. I actually I challenge you if you don't have any of these, you don't think this type of car, these this series of cars, would appeal to you. Get one, and then report back after you've had some good track time with it, and I'll bet you. You'll be a fan. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I had to sneak the Lotus in there because it's a recent release as well, and they just run great together. Uh, I just can't say enough about the quality uh, and how I feel they offer a lot of value. $69.95, $70. In today's soccer world, well, I got to tell you, to me, it's well worth it. And they're just so much fun. They look great and they run great. Both of these cars, just box stock. Like I said, the only thing they need is a good owner and a little bit of voltage. Anyway, hope you guys like the show. Always look forward to your feedback online.